Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today I have a piece of oak. I don't get to turn much oak. I, uh, I don't really have a lot of oak. This is just a piece of uh, two inch thick, roughly eight inch square. It's not square. Piece of what I believe to be white oak. Might be red. I think it's white oak. And I'm just gonna make an ordinary everyday bowl. I don't have a good shape in mind yet. It's only two inches thick, so I can't do a lot with it. But we'll see what I can do, I don't know. And uh, maybe we'll try and decorate it up with some color or I don't, I don't know that either. I, I very seldom turn anything that looks like this. Usually what I turn is in its natural state, bark on, natural edges, that sort of thing. Uh, this, this piece was just sitting on the shelf over here and I've been wanting to turn some oak and I found it and I'm going to turn it. So I've got it mounted up on a 3 8 inch woodworm screw. I'm not going to use tailstock support. We're going to start off at about 1300 RPM. Mask and face shield on. 5 8 inch bowl gouge. Stand by. That oh, hurts. That hurts coming off of there. Ow. Ow. Something else I never do is wear gloves, but uh, I'm going to put a glove on because that just hurts. if we're up here to the corners yet just about I considered leaving it square but I'm just in the mood to make a round bowl uh, well we'll see we'll see how it goes let me get a little closer here don't leave the points Phil come on buddy just make it round why make it difficult because well, it looks kind of cool, but they're not even points because it's not square. Back to round. I'll tell you what, it's playing heck with the edge on my tool. I'm going to sharpen up. That's some hard wood. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, that's our side. What about the bottom? Uh, tenon, recess, what are we going to do here? It's about as simple as it can get, huh? I'm going to do two things here. I'm just going to use my live center to make a, a hole for reference for when I turn it around. Then I'm going to use my live center to make a reference for a tenon. And I don't need that anymore. That's a 3 8 inch ball gouge I'm using. Then I'm going to use my diamond point tool to straighten up the sides. I think we're going to call this the 10 minute bowl. Just have a few minutes in the evening or quick afternoon on a Saturday. This is a good project. Time for sanding. Start in reverse. So uh, starting with 80 grit, work up through 400 at least, and I'll bring you back when it's time to put some finish on here. Okay, maybe we'll call it the 20 minute bowl. I forgot about sanding. 
It turns real quick, that's for darn sure. And that's, that's one of the most fun parts for me about turning something like this, is the speed you can do it at. Because uh, with the natural edge stuff that I usually turn, no way can you turn this fast. I had it up to 1500 there for a, for a few minutes. That was pretty cool. You get a lot smoother cut, and it just goes quickly, that's all. Typically when I'm doing a natural edge or live edge ball, you're looking at uh, maybe a thousand RPM tops, often five, six hundred RPM because it's out of balance. So this, this is like playing games here. This is fun. It's like playing with toys. All right, so that is Howard Feed and Wax on there. I'm gonna let it set for about 20 minutes, buff it up. That 20 minutes doesn't count, by the way. I can't help it. And uh, we'll turn it around and start hollowing it out. Don't go anywhere. Okay, I've turned it around, mounted it up on the tenon. Uh, we're going to be turning at 1500 RPM with the 5 8 inch bowl gouge mask and face shield on. Now, as I said, this there is some cracks in here, so I want to make sure this thing isn't going to blow up on me. Here's one right there. Actually, it goes clear over here. But I don't see a matching one on the outside, so hopefully it doesn't go that deep. I'm already pretty thin here. I might just scrape this now before I go down any further. Good idea, Phil. That scrapes nice. That's a plus. I'm going to sharpen up. Okay, I'm sharp and I adjusted the tool rest to get in here a little closer. We might be approaching final thickness here. Holy crap. Might be. <laughs> oh boy. Good thing I checked. Uh, eighth inch or if that. Time for sanding. Well, that's what I'll be doing for a little bit. Uh, I'm starting at 80 grit. I'll work up through 400 just like I did on the outside, alternating between forward and reverse. I'll bring you back when it's time to put some finish on here. So I like this bowl for its simplicity, but I thought I'd try something a little bit different. Uh, different for me anyway. I don't know, maybe this is done all the time. I'm going to try some Kiwi shoe polish, black shoe polish, just on this top edge. And I don't want to get it anywhere else. I've got just a little bit on a paper towel here. It'll probably take more. And it might take speed to melt it. I don't know. It doesn't seem to be doing much, does it? Let me get a little heavier on here. I thought about uh, melting the wax in the can. It's just in one of these little cans. Or at least uh, warming it up a little bit. Let me try let me try a little speed and see if that melts it. Not much, about 700 RPM. It's 
just not doing anything. Well, I'm disappointed in that. All right, well, try a little more. I also thought about just doing this with a Sharpie, which would have worked, apparently, I, I guess. So a little more speed, a little more black shoe polish. You hear that crack? I think a Sharpie would have worked better. <laughs> this is hardly working at all. This is getting shiny. I'll try a little more speed. About 1200. Just not working. What's up with that? Slower speed? Push a little harder. I'm not pushing very hard. I'll try slower speed and push harder and see what happens. There's probably somebody out there that knows how to do this, or maybe this is just a bad idea. Seemed like a good idea. Get a little more on the paper towel. I think I've heard of this before. I think I've heard people using shoe polish, but uh, maybe a different kind of wood. Maybe this is too too porous of a grain, although I thought, I actually thought that would be a good idea. I thought it would get down in there. Well, it's starting to do something. Maybe that's enough. Is that enough? I'll try a little more. I just don't know. Never tried it. A little more. Uh, what, what were we? We're about 350. I'm going to turn it down to about 300 RPM. Press a little harder. Maybe that's all you want, it's just kind of a hint of black. But yeah, that, that looks kind of cool, I guess. It, it is just getting into the open pores. So it looks like a slow speed and a press kind of hard and kind of a heavy amount on the paper towel. Maybe that's working, at least on this oak. Maybe it wouldn't work at all on a, on a fine grain wood like maple or something. Pushing pretty hard now. I think that's about as good as we're going to get. Yeah, well, you can see it, right? You can see it, I can see it. So now I'll get the Howard Feed and Wax and do the inside like I did the outside. Yeah, all right. We are good. I'll be back to buff that up and then it'll be time to turn it around and take off that tannin. See you then. Okay, I've mounted a block of wood in my chuck and now I'm going to put a piece of non-slip material there and then the bowl. Bring up my tail stock, and I have that hole there for reference. Now I've got to be really gentle with this because that bottom is only less than an eighth of an inch. I think it's more than a sixteenth, but not much. Now I'll bring up the tool rest and grab a three-eighths inch standard grind bowl gouge. Spin this up a little bit and see. That's pretty good. I'm going to turn it about 550 RPM and I'm just going to go real slow, just removing this tenon. Okay, that's small enough. Now I want to get a 3 8 inch swept back gouge to get rid of the rest of this. And I want to get in there a little bit tighter with my tool rest as well. So again, slow and easy. Now I'm going to slow it down to 200. And I'm just going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. Pressure towards the headstock. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. And as soon as that little nub stops turning, then we'll know we're through. Like that. Do you see that bottom flex? 
I did. Watch it back. You'll see it. Then I'll take it over here to the workbench and sand this two inch area up. Well, there it is. We're going to call this one the one hour bowl. I decided to get realistic about it. You can turn it in 20 minutes, I would say, inside and out because it's so simple, so quick and easy. There's the bottom all finished up. I like that little button that I left, a little raised area. Just adds some interest. What do you think of the rim? Uh, I think that adds a little interest as well. It's not as dark as I thought it was going to be. But it's something. Something a little different. There are a couple of cracks in the bowl. But that doesn't bother me. They were there when I started and they're there when I left. And that's that. I could easily fill them. Not going to. Don't want to. Can't make me. Little oak bowl. Quick and easy. Try one. If you like this video, thumbs up please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, I truly appreciate that. Thank you very kindly. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. Your comments are always welcome and I respond to all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.